Listen, everybody. Let's bake a delicious cake for Mario. I don't remember how the rest of this goes, but there's music and it's copyrighted, so I can't use it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the thank you cake from the end of Mario 64, which, as I'm saying it, I'm realizing is thoroughly within Arcade with Alvin territory. But the movie just came out, and I grew up playing this game, and I've always wanted to make a proper tiered cake, and other reasons that I'm making an exception. First, let's start with the filling, and I think it's fitting to make it peach filling. I got a 32-ounce pack of frozen peaches that I'm placing in my 12-inch wide high-walled saute pan, along with 6 ounces of water and 7 ounces of light brown sugar. We're bringing this mixture to the simmer and cooking it for seven to 10 minutes until the peaches are completely tender, utilizing a potato masher to match the peaches in place of potatoes. Then we're whisking together one ounce of cornstarch with two ounces of water and slowly splashing the slurry into the peaches while keeping them moving, continuing to cook over medium low heat until it's practically pie filling. We're then chilling this mixture entirely at least a few hours up to overnight, during which time we can consider cake. Our structurally sound sponge starts with 625 grams of all-purpose flour with a teaspoon of kosher salt, regular sized whisk until homogenous, and mixing about a teaspoon or however much that was vanilla extract to two cups of milk. Lastly, into the bowl of the stand mixer goes four sticks or 450 grams of unsalted butter with 525 grams of granulated sugar and one tablespoon of baking powder. Then we're hooking it into the stand mixer, slowly ramping it up to high speed and creaming for two to three minutes until the butter has lightened in color and could be accurately described as fluffy. Then it's time to give our bowl the first of many thorough scrapings before starting to add 400 grams of eggs one at a time, beating thoroughly for about 30 seconds and studiously scraping the bowl after each addition. Then we're adding our dry stuff and milk in stages. First, a third of our salty flour mixed just enough so that no dry patches remain, followed by half of our vanilla spiked milk, then another third of the flour, the rest of the milk, and then the last third of flour, scraping the bowl between each addition. Toward the end, your batter might start looking curdled, but don't worry. After the final flour stage, it should come together into something instantly recognizable as cake batter. Smooth, thick, and borderline unpourable. This recipe is gonna fill two 10 inch cake pans which we're gonna prep by spraying evenly with nonstick spray and lining with a round of parchment paper. Add half the cake batter, gently spread it around evenly and tap it with great vigor, both to even it out and to release any trapped air bubbles. For the smaller six inch top layers, we're doing a third recipe, all the amounts for which will be in the recipe on the website. And then depending on which size cake you're baking, these are headed into a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes until they clock 200 degrees Fahrenheit and spring back when poked. Next up, we're making Swiss meringue buttercream, a very stable, frosting the firms when chilled, first combining 14 large egg whites with 900 grams of granulated sugar, regular size whisking until homogenous and snotty, and then bringing it over to the stovetop where we have a shallow pan of simmering water at the ready. We're placing our heat-proof bowl over top far away from the water, whisking constantly until the mixture reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Then immediately off the heat, we're dumping that straight into the bowl of a stand mixer, slowly cranking it up to high speed and keeping it there for an inordinate 10 to 15 minutes, enough time so that it nearly triples in volume and achieves the very stiffest of stiff peaks. In other words, when you pull out the wire whip and invert it, it should look like this. Now at this juncture, the mixture may still be quite warm, so if it feels at all toasty to the inside of your wrist, just keep it going at your mixer's lowest speed until the temperature of the outside of the bowl matches that of the human body. Now at this point, we're going to start adding an astounding amount of unsalted butter. Six sticks, or 675 grams, at room temperature, one little piece at a time, while the mixer's running on medium-high speed. Now if the buttercream starts to look runny like this, don't be afraid afraid to take the whole bowl and throw it in the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes. You just want the butter to incorporate, not melt. This process will eventually re-thicken the buttercream into something that lives up to its name. Swiss meringue buttercream is rich, eggy, thick, and wildly smooth. And now it's going to become the mortar with which we build our cakey house. First, I'm placing about a quarter of it in a piping bag for assorted reasons. And then I'm placing one of our completely cooled 12-inch cake rounds on a cake board on a cake stand. Then using my very longest knife, I'm cutting and occasionally rotating to trim off the rounded top. Once you've popped off the initial cap, don't be afraid to make lots of minor adjustments and to eat them, all of them. The more level your cake rounds are, the more anchored and grounded your final cake will appear. Now I'm going to pipe a solid half inch thick ring around the outer perimeter of this cake round. This is going to act as a sort of filling barrier, preventing our peaches from swooshing out as they become load-bearing peaches. Go ahead and spoon a bunch on there and level it out until it's the same height as the buttercream ring. Rinse and repeat the beheading and leveling process with the second cake round, this time leaving it naked on 
on top as it's going to serve as our uppermost lower layer, if that makes any sense at all. Let's see if this helps. Just put it on top of the peaches and stuff. Very gently and as accurately as possible, lay it on top of the first layer, reinforcing the buttercream ring if necessary so that it's flush with the outside of the cake. Now, in the game, it looked like the cake was naked underneath the draped white frosting, but I want a comprehensive crumb coat, so I'm going to tint a small amount of the buttercream, what I will very generously call a cake-like brown, and hit the top with a small amount of the white. This is called the crumb coat, and it basically seals away any errant crumbs that might otherwise ruin our frosting. This guy's headed into the fridge to firm up while we rinse and repeat the process, albeit on a smaller scale. Same exact deal for the six inch cakes, but we're doing a white crumb coat all around. While those are chilling, I'm gonna make the little thank you chocolate bar. I don't feel like tempering chocolate, so I'm gonna use candy melts, which are like if Easter chocolate was a little worse. Basically just microwave these guys until they're melted and that's it, it's very forgiving. So I'm spreading out a very, very thin, smooth layer of the chocolate and pressing into it a rectangular cutter as quickly as possible because this stuff hardens almost instantly when it's this thin. Now, as for the writing, I practiced piping thank you in white chocolate several plus times and I could not do it effectively. So I decided to cut a sort of stencil out of acetate and use it sort of like a, a, a stencil, taping it taut over the chocolate rectangle and spreading the white chocolate thinly over top. Now, while this was very, very satisfying to peel off, it looked a little sloppy, but it's the best chocolate writing I'm gonna pull off at this juncture, so there it is, thank you. It's the thought that counts, not the handwriting. So with our crumb coats applied, it's time to start decorating in earnest. I got our bottom half, which I'm gonna load up with buttercream, spread it evenly, and press it down the sides. The perfect sort of draping that you see in the video game is probably best achieved with fondant, but fondant's gross, so this is my best buttercream approximation. We're putting everything in the fridge so that it firms up after application, busting out the top half, and this time evenly applying the buttercream. I tried to round the edges, but definitely ended up with more of a bevel, which is at least geometrically sophisticated. Next up, I've got eight of my very finest strawberries that I'm gonna brush down with simple syrup to make them glisten, grab our cake bottom, and fetch five large boba straws that I'm gonna insert all the way through the cake evenly to act as a platform, pulling them up ever so slightly, snipping off the tops and pressing them back down. This for our top layer is gonna act as something we could all really use, a support system, giving a level sturdy surface on which we can gently slide our cake top. All the layers are placed and so begins the process of piping. First, some decorative drapery around the bottom half, a supportive strip upon which we can perch our placard. I'm gonna cool it with the alliteration starting now, pipe a ring around the cardboard so as to hide it, and begin placing seven florets evenly around the cake's uh, shelf, crowning with eight much more simple sort of dabs around the top. These, of course, are gonna act as mounts upon which our fruit can perch. Strawberries on the florets, which as you can see, I've drained on paper towels to prevent them from gooing all over the place. And I'm pretty sure those were fresh cherries on top, but they're out of season, so all I could find were maraschino. Precariously place our power star, sorry, last time, followed by our non-denominational Mario and Peach figurine cake toppers. Crank on the power star, and there you have it, the thank you cake from Super Mario 64. Oop, get this out of here. Oop, caught a little frosting there. So let's excise ourselves a slice and see how our layers look and taste. I'm heating my knife in hot water for nice clean slices. As you can see, it looks very clean and neat. I wish I had cut the cakes in half and done triple layers of the peach stuff, but I could only charitably call myself a baker. That stuff's a little bit above my pay grade. I mean, if that weren't already obvious. And it tastes pretty good. At the end of the day, it's a vanilla cake with meringue frosting, hence my desire for more peach filling. But Kendall, Steve, and Nico came up with rather a brilliant solution. Just pile more on top. It's way easier than putting it inside the cake and should have told somebody over at Great British Baking Show. Thank you guys for watching and while I've got you here, I just want to remind you that you can pre-order the Basics with Babish cookbook now, ensuring that you get a copy when it's released October 17th. Check out the links in the video description.